Welcome back to History Class with Dr. W and our continuing discussion of Vietnam. In the previous lecture, we began a discussion of three leaders who ruled over Vietnam in the first half of the 19th century, beginning with Cha Long. We discussed his policies at some length, and in this lecture we're going to continue that discussion, discussing his heirs, Ming Mang and Thieu Tri, who ruled until 1847. As discussed in the previous lecture, Cha Long's 20-year reign included leadership that was somewhat flexible over parts of Vietnam that had long been divided and much of which had been conquered by Cha Long and his forces. His successors, Ming Mang and Thieu Tri, each attempted to bring control to Vietnam, which had long been divided and wrecked by civil strife. Ming Mang was far more ruthless in his enforcement of a strict Confucian-style state than his father had been. While he dismantled the militarized state he inherited from Zhao Long, he also eradicated local warlords, diversity in terms of local and regional religions and customs. The centralized state was greatly empowered under Ming. Ming reintroduced the Confucian ministerial service, the civil service exams, and selection of local leaders based on merit, transparency, and loyalty. To pay for this expanded roster of government officials, along with a variety of state-directed projects like road and bridge building and international trade, Ming increased taxes. He promoted trade, especially with China, but also with other nations and the West. European influence in the region was growing. In 1819, the British acquired Singapore as a colony. British rule was also extending out from India. At the same time, the Dutch were solidifying control over Indonesia. Ming was keenly aware of the rapidly shifting international situation. At the same time, his deepest problems originated from within. Beginning in 1802, Zhao Long had left control of the far southern provinces in the hands of some of his closest friends and trusted allies. When Ming assumed control and began to implement his Confucian system of rule, some of these southern leaders began to turn against him. The far south was heavily influenced by many groups, Catholic missionaries, Chinese merchants, non-Viet traders and settlers, local strongmen, Buddhists, and so on. While many had been loyal to Zhao Long, they were not as loyal to Ming. With the passage of years, Ming began to sense that his greatest challenge came from these people. In 1832, after his father's closest friend had died in the south, Ming Mang demanded that all male descendants of the Taesun brothers were to be executed. Many others who may have challenged his rule were captured or executed as well. Then Ming divided the kingdom into 31 provinces and 283 districts, a vast administrative network over which he appointed all officials. He also changed the name of the country to Dai Nam, or Greater South. He also presided over the creation of a vast network of temples, altars, shrines, and a pantheon of heroes and gods. Religion also was now controlled by the state. Anyone who defied Ming was crushed. These included the Khmer, the Cham, Catholics, and others. He also continued the tradition of Viet expansion extending his reach into portions of Laos and Cambodia, carving out a nation that resembled what would become French Indochina within a few decades. Nonetheless, it was difficult for Vietnam to maintain its growth and stability under Ming's aggressive policies. It was impossible for the capital city of Hue to produce quality civil servants to oversee the vast and rapidly growing kingdom. At the same time, it was difficult to find enough civil servants who were willing to serve in these far-flung provinces. Often, these offices were not enviable positions, 
as local leaders and citizens either stewed in discontent or even rose up in rebellion against Ming's officials. In our next lecture, as we will see, the time has come in the midst of this disorganized and chaotic setting for an outside presence to assert its influence, the French. <laughs>